All right, in the previous two lessons, we saw how to, first of all, pull off the exploit of swapping our command file for the set hc, or the sticky keys executable file in our Windows System 32 directory. That gave us the ability to compromise the computer by just pressing the shift key five times. And I'll demonstrate that one more time here. There we go, we've got a beautiful Windows command prompt running as the system level user, NT authority. That's Windows NT authority, the super administrator root on this Windows 7 computer that I owned several years ago. And once we could run that command prompt, we could reset my username with just net user bpain bpain. Reset my username to bpain, so now I don't need to remember my username from all those years ago. But if I log in as bpain, I'm hoping that my important work files and some of my family vacation photos are still on this old computer from years ago. And look at that. My important work files and family vacation photos. Okay, maybe I staged those files for you a little bit. But the point is, anything that was on this computer from several years ago that I just could not access anymore because I forgot my password, I can now get to and I can see everything that was not encrypted on this computer. The only way really to protect against this is to disable in BIOS the ability to boot from a CD or DVD. Uh, the other way to protect your files is to encrypt them. Now if I encrypt something in here like my family vacation photos by right clicking coming to advanced and then telling it to encrypt the contents to secure the data, well then everything is going to be encrypted using my username and this password, the bpane that I'm using right now. So if someone comes in and resets my password later, they won't be able to see any of the files that I encrypted using that previous password. They will have to know my username and real password before they can do this. So any files that I've encrypted will still be safe. That's one of the reasons we use encryption on computers these days is because if someone does get our laptop, uh, if we walk away from it in a coffee shop or if we leave it in an airport or if someone just accesses our desktop and runs this hack, any files that are encrypted will not be visible to those new users who use even the administrative level account. Well, let's see that administrative level account because I think I had some more files on this computer. Maybe I saved them as administrator and I didn't take time to reset that administrative password. Let's switch users by logging off and coming back in as Iron Man. And remember, Iron Man is a member of the administrative group. So if I use his password Jarvis, it's going to do a little bit of setup because this is a brand new user who's logging in for the first time. It just so happens that we created this user with the username Iron Man and password Jarvis. And because this is a brand new user, if I go into Iron Man's documents, they're completely empty. However, Iron Man is an administrator on this computer, so Iron Man can not only look inside Iron Man's folders, but it is an administrator. He can continue through to bpain's folders. There are my family vacation photos and my important work files. And now if I go back up, I can look at administrator. And all I have to do is click through for permission, continue. And now I can look for those other files that I think I had on this old computer from forever ago. Let's go to the desktop. There's nothing in documents. Let's check here. Look at that. There are, are, are all my old files from when I was working on my Certified Ethical Hacker certification. Wow, very nice. So you can see as this new user, Iron Man, that I just created, I'm not only able to see my old files, I'm able to see everybody's files on this computer, this old laptop, as long as they didn't use encryption. So if you want to protect against this hack, use encryption on the hard drive. Uh, but if you tie it to your usernames, for, if you're doing this for a large enterprise, it's a great way to protect that data because someone is going to lose an old laptop and by encrypting that information, you'll make sure that even though someone can use that laptop because they can create a new user just like we did using a simple Windows 10 boot disk or even a bootable USB drive, they'll be able to create new users. They just won't be able to access those old files if they're encrypted. And the second way you can protect against these types of attacks 
is to make sure that you turn off that ability to change the boot order. If you're a system administrator for a company, you may not want people to be able to boot from a CD disk or boot from USB. You can go into BIOS on your company's computers and you can turn off or disable or password protect that ability to change the boot order. So we've seen a vulnerability, that sticky keys. We've seen an exploit, the ability to copy the command prompt file over. If I hit shift key here five times, I'm going to see a new command prompt window pop up open from anywhere I may be. Then third, we saw the compromise where I was able to add a new user and then I can log in as that user. I can make that user an administrator using just a couple of simple commands at the command prompt and then I can see all the files on the computer from all the users on this machine. Well, this is a great first exercise in practical, hands-on, real-world ethical hacking because you may have an old computer or someone may give you an old computer someday and you may want to be able to set up a brand new user without installing a whole new operating system or wiping the hard drive. You may, be, you may want to help your friends access some old files that they thought were gone forever because they just couldn't remember their password from years ago. And if you work in information security in a company, you can use this to bypass some user settings and actually see what a user has installed on your computer. We use some uh, tools like this sometimes when we're doing forensics or gathering information on what someone's been doing on our network. However you use this, make sure you use it with full permission from the owner of the system or the owner of the network, or use it on computers that you own and control. I hope you've enjoyed this first hands-on exercise in ethical hacking. We'll see you in the next lesson.